all right you are welcome again today i want us to talk about set theory and i want us to begin by knowing the basics of set you know this is just like refreshing your memory because it's not the first time you are hearing about set is that true yes you have been seeing them you have been hearing it but let's refresh our minds again okay so what do we say that set is we say that set is a well-defined collection of objects a well-defined collection of object those elements they have similar properties why they belong to such set okay now we say that we have two ways of representing a set Number one, we say roster or tabular form. Then number two, we say rule method or set builder form. So in roster form, we say that all the elements of the set are listed. You just list them, that is a one method. For instance, we have a set A. And then in this set, the elements are A, E, I O U. You get it? Now, this is a way of representing a set. And in the same way, we have another form of representing a set, which is set builder form. Then we say that in a set builder form, a set is defined by specifying a property that the element of the set have in common. So in this rule method or set builder form the elements are not listed but the set is defined by specifying the property by specifying the nature of those elements so let for you to figure those properties and list them out okay for instance we have a set e then we say that this set A is a set of element X such that X is a vowel in the English alphabet. A set A is a set of element X such that X is a vowel in the English alphabet. Now when you look at this, if you are to list them out, I think you are going to come up with what we have as above, right? As the set A e i o u you get it right so you see the difference right good now let's talk about superset and subset now let's say we have a set a and we have a set b when we have this sign like this a c b like this what does it mean it means a is a subset of b or you can say that A is contained in B. You no, know, this sign in the middle, which one is it facing? It's facing B. So we simply say that A is in B, whichever one is facing. You get it? And anyone that is facing is the super. So the other one is called the sub. So we say that A is a subset of B. And then or we say that b is a superset of a and a is not equal to b a is not equal to b so when we have a set like this you get it we have a a sign that looks like c and we have b it means a is a subset of b or we simply say that A is contained in B. Which of these set is this sign or symbol facing? Is facing B. That means that is the container of the set. So we say that A is contained in B. Or we say that A is a subset of B. So if A is a subset of B, then b is a superset of a but mind you a is not equal to b 
You get it right? Good. Now, take a look at this one again. We have B. Look at this sign, A. It means that B contains A. It means that B contains A. The sign is facing B. So whichever one is facing, that one holds the content. You say B contains A. Or we say that B is a superset of A. Then you know that A is not equal to B. Okay? So we say that a set A is said to be a subset of another set B. If only if. All the elements in A can be found in the set B. So we say that A is a subset of B. Now take a look at this sign. Do you see this expression? Now, they are not the same. All these are not the same, but I will explain. Okay? Now, let's talk about a proper subset. And I want to use a mathematical statement to explain what it is. Now we say A, a subset of B, means that there exists at least one element X such that X exists in B, but X do not exist in A. So this set a is called a proper subset of b hello we say that this set a is called a proper subset of b now look at it you have a set a and you have a set b and then all the elements in set a can be found in b we say that this set a is called a subset of b and then if there is at least one element in B that is not in A, that is when you can say that this subset A is called a proper subset. Otherwise, it is improper subset. That is to say that A can be equal to B. So if all the elements in A are the same with elements in B, and all the elements in B are the same with all the elements in A. That means they are still subset but improper subset. That is the reason why we say that a set is a subset of itself but not a proper subset. You get it? Okay, now let me explain this thing to you, the difference. We have A subset of B. When you see this sign, this first one here, it means that the number of elements in A is less than the number of elements in B. You know, A is a subset of B. Then, the number of elements in A is less than the number of elements in B, which is the superset. And then the second one, look at it. We have A subset of B. The same sign. But this case, we have equal you know just like saying uh, less than and less than or equal to greater than or greater than or equal to this just the same thing okay now look at it we say if you have a subset of b in this form it means that the number of elements in a is less than or equal to the number of elements in b so plainly you see that whenever you see a subset of b this first one that is to say they are talking about a proper subset talking about a proper subset but if you see the second one i say number of elements in a is less than or equal to number of elements in b it's talking about the mixture it can be proper subset and it can also be improper subset okay so we say that a Subset of B, this sign like this, is used to denote proper subset. Now, let's take a look at properties of subset. Properties of subset. So, we say that any set is considered to be a subset of itself. 
any set is considered to be a subset of itself yes any set number two no set is a proper subset of itself because a proper subset is always less than the superset you get it yes then number three the empty set is a subset of every set hello you get it the empty set is a subset of every set then number four the empty set is a proper subset of every set except for itself empty set you know when i talk about empty set is a proper subset of every set except for itself empty set you now just take a look at number two we say no set is a proper subset of itself so empty set is a proper subset of every set but not for itself you get it yes these are the four interesting properties of subset now let's take a look at something like this whenever you see something like a union b a union b look at it it means that it is a set of elements x such that x exists in a or x exists in b you know this is mathematical statement of what a union b means so that a union b is a set of elements x such that x exists in a or x exists in b take a look at this we have to set we have set a the element we have one two three then set b we have one three four five so a union b is talking about the elements that you can find in a or in b so in this set a union b the number of elements you can trace them where they are coming from either in a or in b you get it so we have one one can be found in set a and it can also be found in set b yes there's no repetition you get it you are not allowed to repeat any element okay no repetition so we have one can be found in a and it can also be found in b then two can be found in a but not in b is also there then three it can be found in a and in b good then four it can be found in b five can be found in b so all the elements that you can find in a or in b you list them out we call it union of set so we say a union b are the set of element x such that x exists in a or x exists in b you get it good now let's go again we have a intersection b we have a intersection b it means a set of element x such that x exists in a and x exists in b is the set of elements x such that x exists in a and x exists in b let's take a look at this example we have a set a one two three and we have a set b one three four five so a intersection b is talking about the element that you can find in a and you can also find that same element in b so the first one is one we can find one in set a and we can find one in set b the next element is three you can find three in a and you can find three in b all right yes so we say that a intersection b is the element that you can find in a and you can also find in b so such element we have one and three so say one and three is the intersection of a and b 
Is that clear? Yes. Now let's take a look at another thing. We have a superscript C or a prime. It's talking about a complement. It's a sign used to represent a complement. And what does it mean? It means a set of elements X such that X exists in a universal set but X do not exist or does not exist in set A. Now, he's talking about all the elements that exist in universal set but do not exist in set A. And then you know that A is a subset of universal set. So it's talking about all those elements that makes universal set to be different from set A. Or he's talking about all the elements that when you add it to set A, it will make this A to be a complete universal set. You see, complementary. You get it? Complement. So, they are the element that completes A to be a universal set. So, they are the element that when you add it to A, it will be a complete universal. So, we call it A complement. The element that exists in a universal set, but they do not exist in the set A. Okay? Let me show you an example. Let's say you have a universal set. And then this is a set X, such that X is English alphabet. So here we know English alphabet, right? Good. So, so here we have another set A. And then this is a set of elements X, such that X is consonant letters in English alphabet. Okay, good. Now, if we want to talk about A complement, we are talking about the element that exists in universal set, but they are not in the set A. You get it? You know, in English alphabet, we have consonant letters and vowel letters. So, when you combine consonant letters and vowel letters, it will give you the complete English alphabet. Is that true? Yes. So, here now, after when you have listed the whole English alphabet in universal set. And we have another set A, and we listed uh, consonant letters. So what are those elements in universal that are not in the set A? You discover that those letters are vowel letters. So those ones that are in universal, but not in this set A, is called A complement. In another way, you can say that they are the elements that when you add them to this set A, it will be a complete universal set. So when you add these vowel letters that are not in this set A to set A, it will make set A to be a complete universal set. Is that true? Yes. So we say that a set is called a complement of a set. It's a set of element X such that X exists in universal, but X do not exist in set A. So we call it A complement. Is that clear? So here we say that A complement is the set of element X such that X is vowel letters in English alphabet. Is that clear? Yes. Now let's take a look at another thing. We have something like this. It looks like A minus B. But it is not A minus B. We call it A difference of B. We call it what? A difference of B. What does it mean? Now, we are talking about a set of elements X such that X exists in A and X does not exist in B. So, it's talking about difference. The difference between A and B. Those elements that exist in A, but they are not in B. They are called A difference of B. Element in A, but not in B. Now, take a look at this. A 
difference of B is not the same as B difference of A. Hello? It's not the same as what? B difference of A. Yeah, it's not the same. So here we say A difference of B. It means a set of elements X such that X exists in A and the X does not exist in B. We call it A difference of B. You get it? Yes. Now let's take a look at another thing. Look at this symbol. Look at this sign. We call it symmetric difference. We call it what? Symmetric difference. So we say A, symmetric difference of B. Now what is it talking about? It's talking about a set of elements that belongs to A or to B, but not in both A and B. A, symmetric difference of B. They're talking about the element that belongs to A or it belongs to B but it must not belong to both A and B. It's called symmetric difference. Now, let me bring it down in another way. We say that symmetric difference, that is when you say A, symmetric difference of B, it means A, difference of B, union B, difference of A. Now, look at this first set. We say A, difference of B. The element in A but not in B. And the element in B but not in A. You bring them together. We call it symmetric difference. We call it symmetric difference. Now, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at this. A cross B. Not A times B. What does it mean? It means Cartesian product. And what does this Cartesian product talking about? It's talking about PS of elements. Now, when we say A cross B, you are going to get set of PS element. Element that comes in PS. And then, 2, 2 PS. And then, based on, if you have A cross B cross C, it will come in 3 PS. Then you have a cross B, 2 PS. So, this element is going to come in this form, A comma B, such that A exists in A, or A, small letter A, comes in the set A, and B comes from the set B. You get it? That is A cross B. It's a set of peer elements, set of elements in PS such that the first element come from the first set and the second element come from the second set you get it now let me give you an instance we have a set a and the elements are one two three and the set b the elements are a comma b here let's say we have a cross b that means we are going to form set of two pairs of elements of which the first element will come from the first set and the second element will come from second set that means we are going to have pairs of two two elements now the first pair here we have the first element will come from a which is one the second element will come from set b which is what a so here we have one comma a then we'll say comma. We have another pair. We have the first one will come from the first set. The second one will come from the second set. So let's one come again and then pick from the second set B. So here we have one comma B. Then let's have another pair. We have two come from the first set and then A come from the second set. Form another pair. We have two come from the first set and then B come from the second set we have another pair three come from the first set and then a come from the second set we have another pair three come from a and b come from b all right yes these are a cross b the perfect pairs of element that you can get from a and b so we call it cartesian product 
Now let's take a look at properties of Cartesian products. Some of the properties. We have four of them. Now let's say for the four sets A, B, C, and D. Number one property. We say that A intersection B cross C intersection D is equal to A cross C intersection B cross D. Take a look at this. It's a property. It's true. Then number two. We say that A difference of B cross C is equal to A cross C difference of B cross C. is a property. Then number three. We say that A union B cross C is equal to A cross C union of B cross C is a property. Now, number four, A cross B intersection C is equal to A cross B intersection A cross C. These are the properties of Cartesian products. In the next lesson, you are going to take these properties one after the other and prove them. Okay? Thank you for watching. Please like and share our videos. And stay blessed.